All right, ladies and gentlemen, season 19 slash season of the Seraph slash season of the worthy 2.0 is here. And that means a brand new seasonal artifact. And as is tradition here on the channel, we're going to be taking a look at the new seasonal artifact, what the mods do and which ones you should be unlocking first. But before we get into that, I would like to thank Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. There's three types of people I don't understand in life. One, people that put ketchup on steak. Two, people that wear sunglasses indoors. And three, people that still carry around big, bulky wallets. Thankfully, there's a solution to the last one, that solution being Ridge Wallet. With their sleek, minimalistic designs and over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber, which is my personal favorite, and burnt titanium, you can ensure that there's a style for you. My favorite part is that this small, compact wallet holds 12, yes, 12 cards with room for cash. Oh, and not to mention Ridge also offers a new key case that I also got in carbon fiber for your annoying rattling keys. I love the fact that my pockets no longer jingle with this thing. And right now you can get up to 40% off through December 22nd by going to ridge.com slash MyFi. That's ridge.com slash MyFi to save up to 40% off through December 22nd. Once again, thank you so much to Ridge for sponsoring this video. So starting us off, the seasonal artifact this season is called the Seraph Cipher, and you get it by just completing the introduction mission to the season and talking to a certain someone. Not gonna be saying who that certain someone is for spoiler reasons, but you'll get it after you talk to them. So now taking a look at the artifact, I like to separate it up into three different categories. The first category is column one. These are all your champion mods columns two and three used to be mainly weapon mods like unflinching targeting scavenger reload dexterity like all that good stuff but as of recently they've uh started to incorporate more not those types of mods and you'll see what i'm talking about in just a second and then the third category would be columns four and five these are normally where you find the super op mods uh for that given season any crazy op mods that we've ever had in a given season come from columns four and five normally so now let's get into the mods themselves in column one you're gonna find unstoppable hand cannon overload scout rifle piercing bowstring anti-barrier pulse rifle and overload round from column one you're gonna want to take unstoppable hand cannon piercing bowstring anti-barrier pulse rifle and overload rounds next up columns two and three first you have grenade launcher holster legacy ambush in flight compensator bow dexterity and mobile retrofit then column three you have hand cannon targeting pulse rifle loader energy diffusion substrate sharp shooting and resilient retrofit now what you take first in these two columns kind of depends on if you play pve mainly or pvp mainly if you're playing pvp then more than likely you're going to end up taking hand cannon targeting and in-flight compensator which in-flight compensator if you don't know just increases the airborne effectiveness of all your equipped weapons but on the flip side if you're playing pve mainly then you're probably going to want to take grenade launcher holster and energy diffusion substrate energy diffusion substrate is kind of what we've had in the past few seasons except this time it's uh you know encompasses all three elements uh but it's looks as if it's not going to be as strong and then of course in columns two and three you're also going to have your origin trait boosters so legacy ambush and sharpshooting if you use the weapons that have these origin traits a lot then you might want to consider picking them up now the final two i want to talk about is going to be mobile retrofit and resilient retrofit these might seem kind of useless because they're only plus five but uh don't forget that uh these do not go in the same slot that your actual like like resilience boost uh mod would so for example res like these types of mods normally would go here and the artifact ones go in these two right here so effectively you could have a plus 15 resilient uh boosting mods on the same piece of armor now while i personally probably won't be running them because i already have a decent armor that already has me at you know 100 and the stats that I want uh if you're a new player or a returning player and you don't really have that good of armor yet well then these could come in handy boosting you up now for columns four and five first we have unstoppable grenade launcher counter charge advanced scout lord kelvin's I almost just said ball sack basilisk <laughs> Uh, low entropy superconductor and then for column five passive aggressive guard 
weakened clear monochromatic maestro solo operative and lucent finisher now from this i just want to immediately go ahead and point out unstoppable gl and weak and clear um weak and clear if you don't know is essentially a breach and clear just uh, not as good and then if you're also running unstoppable grenade launcher well anarchy could very well be back on the menu next up i want to talk about monochromatic maestro the essentially just dealing damage with elemental abilities grants increased damage to weapons of the same element for a short duration and then vice versa dealing damage with elemental weapons grants increased damage to abilities of the same element for a short duration uh this is probably going to be used in quite a few builds also lucent finisher we had this back when witch queen first launched it was a pretty god tier mod essentially just uh defeating a lucent hive light bearer or a champion with your finisher spawns heavy ammo for you and your allies it's essentially three points and you're just generating tons of heavy ammo also lord kelvin's basilisk uh we only have one other overload uh mod which is going to be for subs and autos so this right here i definitely think you should take your void and stasis nades are essentially going to overload overload or disrupt overload champions and then the final mod i want to take a look at is going to be solo operative this is new so while you are the only member of your fire team you deal increased damage to all combatants now we don't have exact testing to how much this is going to be it's probably like 15 I, I doubt it would be 30 percent but it might i i would say anywhere from like 10 to 15 percent uh once we figure that out i'll have it down in the pinned comment but uh if you're a solo player i think that this right here should be one of the first mods that you pick up once you reach these columns but that is the seasonal artifact just to recap unstoppable hand cannon piercing bowstring anti-barrier pulse rifle and overload rounds in column one if you're playing mainly pvp then you're probably going to want to pick up hand cannon targeting and in-flight compensator first for columns two and three but if you play mainly pve then grenade launcher holster and energy diffusion substrate and then also if you're like a newer player and you don't really have good armor then you could potentially pick up mobile retrofit and or resilient retrofit then for columns four and five unstoppable grenade launcher and weekend clear anarchy is probably back on the menu if i'm being honest monochromatic maestro for all you elemental build people out there solo operative for all of you solo players out there lucent finisher for literally just free heavy ammo all the time everywhere lord kelvin's basilisk for your void and stasis nades overloading champions and then if you're like a big glaive user you could go with passive aggressive guard and if you want another way to unstop champions then you could go with low entropy superconductor but yeah that's the artifact this season and in my opinion i think this is a pretty good artifact i definitely think it's better than last season's last season's artifact kind of sucked uh but it looks like we have some pretty good mods uh back on the menu don't forget that you can unlock all of the mods it's just the first like 14 go at the normal rate and then anything after 14 mods have been unlocked is going to be much much slower so just keep that in mind that you can unlock all of them but your first 14 are the ones you're going to want to make sure that you want because after that it's going to take you a little bit to unlock the rest that is the new seasonal artifact for season 19 slash season of the seraph and which mod you should be unlocking first let me know your thoughts on these mods and just the artifact in general down below with all that being said if you're new around here and you want to see more destiny 2 related content then feel free to subscribe i'd appreciate it if you enjoyed the video then don't forget to drop a like and i'll catch you all in the next one peace